Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, I am excited to discuss the release of a new motion control software that many of you in the U.S. have never even seen. Uh, it's been out for quite some time. It's seldom discussed. It's seldom understood in the sense of the potential it has because if it was understood, I feel it would have been instantly a hit due to the fact of the features that it encompasses. And you'll see that as we cover it. Um, I've been uh, privileged enough to work with the engineers in Russia uh, going over some features that I would like to see added. They've welcomed it with open arms, any type of uh, comments and any type of feedback we've given them. And I have to say, I am really, really impressed, not just with the support, uh, and, and that's saying a lot considering their time difference, but they've been fantastic as far as staying up to date with any questions I had, with full screenshots, ex explanations, videos, whatever it takes. And mind you, we're dealing with a language barrier. Uh, and they've come through once again with open arms and they've welcomed it. And that being said, um, Mach 3 has been out for some time. Mach 4 was just released. It's more or less beta software as far as I'm concerned. This software takes motion control to a whole new level. It is a 64-bit architecture software. Therefore, it's really designed around the faster processors, Intel i5, Intel i7, any type of AMD multi-core processors, uh, once again, higher memory of all modern systems. This is really not designed around using, you know, archaic laptops, archaic desktops using Windows XP. This is the next level above, and you'll see why in a moment. So what I'm going to do is just brush through the features of this software, and you'll see why, because it's, it's really in-depth. It's very, very easy to understand for my Mach 3 guys that are crossing over if they want to look into this. Um, but there are some stipulations. And I just want to begin by opening this up, and in this way we can cover some things. You guys notice right here, see it says automatic tool change? That's right. There's a module in this software for automatic tool change, which is saying a lot because many of you requested that. And we all know that most motion control software, unless you're modding it in some way, shape, or form, it doesn't encompass it. Well, this software has it standard. Um, as an add-on module. And again, when I say standard add-on module, there are a lot of add-on modules. That being said, you can see here milling 4, milling 6, <coughs> excuse me, uh, milling 9, oxy fuel cutting and plasma cutting. So we've got 4 axis, 6 axis, 9 axis, oxy fuel cutting with no one's seen, uh, and plasma cutting, which a lot of my guys that are out there doing plasma cutting and are, have requested um, oxy fuel modules, now you have that availability. Um, again, I've worked with them extensively, so I have the beta release of the software for testing purposes, and you guys will get to see the modules as we go through. I'm going to select here milling six axis. Now, one thing you'll notice right off the bat, if I leave the mouse on any of these, and I come down, matter of fact, there you go. If I come down, you'll see that you'll get little, little boxes pop up with definitions defining what you're about to click on. This is super empowering in itself due to the fact that Everything now is made self-explanatory, so to speak, so you're not guessing what you're about to click on. Most software doesn't have that, and they've done an exquisite job doing that and trying to make things as simple as possible. So right here, <clears throat> you can go through, and you can see here color theme. This is just your background of it when you actually open it up. If you want to see that again, available color theme, see, just leaving it over it. I'm going to select milling 9 axis, or actually I'll select milling 6 axis. We'll go in here, and you can see exactly what we've got here. Now, of course, I've already loaded a Ford logo. I'm just, once again, um, I was playing with the software. You'll notice one thing right off the bat. You can see how modern this is. First of all, the controller up here reflects that it's in simulator mode. It is server-based software, and once again, that keeps the load um, primarily on their server, and it does streamline working with your computer. Super, super powerful. You can see an on-off button here. And again, if I just leave the mouse on there, CNC machine on-off or emergency stop. So right now, there are certain features that you can manipulate. Other features you cannot because the module is not turned on. So essentially, this is a digital power on to the software itself. Okay. Think of it as an e-stop reset, whichever way you'd like. You also have a stop button, a start button. You can see these icons very clearly. We've got our, uh, our actual menu options for our G-code. MIDI, you can actually enter in basically anything you want. It's only got two screens. We come over to diagnostics. You can see here you can expand 
just about everything. You can see all of everything you're able to do with this software. It even has multiplex inputs, which are really, really advanced, where you can have one item do multiple things, um, and that's an accessory. It really, there isn't many op options for that right now. That's just advanced capabilities of what they're looking at. You got your offsets, your G54 offsets here. You've got your current coordinates. Once again, now you can see all six axes reflected. You do not see that over here due to the fact I only have three motors active. But one thing I want to point out, because this is near and dear to my heart, let me just grab a drink real quick, please. You can see that we have soft limits active the second you get into the software. And that is a feature that I requested for guys not using switches. As soon as you enter the software, your machine is instantly protected. And again, super, super powerful in terms of selectability, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Um, right now the software is off. I'm going to power it on the module. You can see right now we have our barriers on our soft limits, and you can see that right here. If I zoom out, you can see the simulated table. If I rotate this, you can see the three-dimensional table. And you can see here the height of your z-axis is giving you a dimensional aspect, so to speak three-dimensionally of where your z-axis is. But let's say for some reason you'd like to turn off just your z-axis soft limit. You can come over here to any of these boxes. Now right now, again, the software is still in a beta testing stage, and you can see uh, allow software limits for X, allow software limits for X, allow software limits for X. It just has not correlated to reflecting each axis. But if I come over here to my z and I hit this, boom, now your table is now in two dimensions because we've lost the height of the z-axis soft limits being active. If I click it again, I can activate it and you can see the barrier of soft limits now active. So what does that mean to you? That means of course you can cycle on and off your soft limits based on whatever requirement you have. Custom macros. You can see right here I've set up my macros so I've got my offsets on the front page which would save you an inordinate amount of time just being able to come in here, check everything out. If you want to go to G55, boom, you're right in the center of the table. If you want to go to G54, back over. That right there, once again, keeps everything on the front screen as far as your um, HUD, so to speak. You manipulate anything you like. MC for machine coordinates. Once again, I'm not. I'm just highlighting it as far as moving the mouse over to the actual button. As I do that, you can see show coordinates for machine or G54 through G59 coordinate system. If I click this, you can see MC, MC, MC. Once again, machine coordinates reflect in Mach 3 where your machine would be in correlation to the end stop position on the table. So if I jog over, you see I'm jogging, and if I jog over and I hit the soft limits, boom, she's gonna stop right there, done, and then I would just hit go home, she's gonna go right back, and you're done. Okay, so machine coordinates, very simple module. Once again, you're set. You do have your home button, home all axis, and zero all machine coordinates. Very simple. Um, one of the features of this software that is so powerful is, once again, we're going to come over here to configuration, and we're going to go to our calibration wizard. And I just want to highlight some of the features that are really, really impressive. Their steps per unit calibration is way more advanced than Mach 3 as far as you've got a whole window drop down and you can select here what axis you want to calibrate. Of course, there would be six axis if I activated the additional three. Uh, moving speed, you can do steps, uh, steps per unit current. Once again, select an axis, set the calibration parameters. You can just leave your mouse. It'll tell you exactly what to do. It goes takes you to complete stage uh, one first. Then it'll go right to stage two. Here's something that's really unique. For my guys out there running slave axis, this software will allow you to configure calibrating each axis to be in conjunction with one another. This is super powerful if you have a switch that is not set up correctly in the sense of tolerance. You may have one axis, which typically you do, that will be positive or negative a couple thousandths off. You can come in here and once again distance along the X, distance along the Y, gantry width in units, gantry, uh, gantry axis to align, you can select and you can come through here and run this calibration so that we make sure that we get our axis squared, so to speak, uh, for our gantry to our X axis. So again, 
Very, very interesting stuff here when we go Y to X. Make sure everything here is square. Make sure everything you're able to do with this is now being transpired, not just in a simple calibration, which we do right here for steps per unit, but also to come over here and do individual axis calibration based on your Y axis for slaving. That is something that's been very well requested and a module you're not going to see anywhere else. Very smooth to do. So let's see what this software can do as far as um, actually access control. You can see here system allows set remote control restrictions for Pumatic server. When the lock is on, any Pumatic client connected from another computer will be switched in the view only mode. Turn off the lock in order to be able to remote control. The access lock uh, can have password protection. So again, you do have the ability to lock your system if you walk away. That's another feature a lot of guys have wanted to talk about. Um, that's very powerful if you're in a machine shop setting. You walk away from your machine for a, set, uh, a minute and you don't want anything uh, to be manipulated. This is super powerful. Okay, let's go again. You can see there's, there's not really too many screens here. Now the license manual or excuse me, um, license module, or they call it the license manager. manager. Um, Pumotics right here is a software based setup. Now you're going to see all the modules as I click on these. You can see simple milling machine. If you click on it, you can see what modules this has in the base setup. Machine setup wizard, supports CNC pendants, supports toolpath preview, G-code files, user interface, coolant aspiration. Now one thing I want to point out is that their G-code file is not limited. If you purchase this actual software, it is unlimited with their controllers. So if you buy the base actual uh, hardware, whether it be a PLCM, whichever PLCM module you buy, as far as a controller, you will get unlimited G-code use. That's unheard of in the industry. It's totally unheard of. So Again, right out of the gate, you already got unlimited G-code use, and you will have all of these features that are in a perpetual format, so you do not need to purchase anything else. Now, there are a lot of features that would make it worthwhile for you to look at purchasing. Now, let's get into some of them. General features. Control roll gang support. What is that? If I click on this, you can see right here the feature allows to control a powered roll gang. It can be used when cutting pipes using a pivot shaft. This is a really advanced feature. Um, I'll be quite honest with you. I would have to see it done to really understand it myself because it's not something I've played with. But again, when I tell you advanced, it's got some serious, serious power. One additional motor. Feature allows to add one additional motor. Let's see if we can get this out of the way. One additional motor to the three motors available in the basic set of options. The maximum number of available motors with this feature is four. Feature can be used only once. If the feature is already included in the package, then a separate purchase of the same feature is not possible. If you need more than four engines, use the unlimited motors number option instead. Now, again, depending on what you want to do and how, how exquisite you need the software as far as expandability, you can buy the additional fourth motor, or you could just say, I'm going to go with the unlimited motor option as far as a module. Once again, always looking to save and not make you pay more than you have to in terms of what features the software supports. So you can go with either four to get your – using four motors, you pay for just one additional. Or you can go with the unlimited motors option and go up to nine, which is just insane when we're dealing with um, steppers. So again, coming over here, unlimited number of motors. When this option is active, uh, software limitation of maximum motors count as disabled. So once again, you're unlimited to nine. Rapid rate override option allows to override rapid moves velocity, G00, without changing access settings and configuration. Coordinate system rotation by G code. Option allows, allows to use special G code, which rotates coordinate system by a specified angle. The coordinate system alignment module allows to rotate the machine coordinate system in the XY plane if the workpiece is mounted on a table, not strictly parallel to the machine axis. The alignment operation is carried out at two points on one side of the workpiece or by entering the value of the angle, the workpiece, excuse me, on the angle of rotation of the coordinate system. Most applicable for thermal cutting of sheet metal sheet material, excuse me, without the option, the use of the coordinate system rotation in the G10 command is not available. So again, guys, we're getting real advanced here if we need to actually square our material to our, uh, 
our system as far as our G-code X and Y plane you can do that with this module again you can see license apply I'm coming down additional U V and W axis support the feature allows to use additional linear axis of UV and W. These axes can be used to control the rigging of the machine and other auxiliary movements. Caution, the UV and W axis do not support circular interpolation. So again, uh, these are standard axis. You're not going to do rotary axis support with them, but you do have this availability. Fast start from an arbitrary point. The time spent on preparing the trajectory planner to run from an arbitrary line will be significantly less. The larger the file, the greater the effect of this feature recommended for milling machines. Uh, reverse run. Option allows run G-code in reverse mode. This allows quick, quickly fix uncut sites. Starting from an arbitrary point, feature allows to resume the ex execution of G-code program directly from the point where it was stopped by the stop command or by the operation of special inputs such as a sensor for the opening door of the protective cabin or the sensor for touching the metal with a plasma torch. In this case, the machine makes a regular, not emergency, stop, and coordinates of the stop point are remembered. After that, you can move the machine as you wish, including adjust it to a convenient position, remove the chips from the cutter, or completely replace it. Now just click Start button, and the machine itself will return to the uh, stop analog point and continue to execute the G-code. In this case, the return to the starting point of execution will be carried out according to the selected preparation move mode. Very advanced, once again in terms of her memorizing exactly where it was stopped if you uh, depending upon if you're using an enclosure with your machine once again like I said you can take this to whatever level you'd like you've got a lot of features here as far as what's currently available and offered in what's openly available on our market g-code execution and calculation option allows to estimate g-code execution time that's pretty self-explanatory commands control outputs uh, option allows to use special commands M10 and M11 to control user outputs from GCO without delays and slowdown. In Pimotics, the execution of any uh, non-trivial macro requires complete stop of movement. After completion of the macro body, the movement along the trajectory continues. But M10 and, 11 can, M10 and M11 are commands that allows to control user outputs from GCO without delays and, and slowdown. The GCO program will run as if these programs are not between the trajectories, but output signal management will occur in a timely manner. So again, a lot of these features you may have questions on. You'll have to play with the software to see it. If you do have questions, of course, we can come back and, and come to it. But again, you're getting the idea of what we're, what we're dealing with here. Background operations option allows to create and run small macros, uh, which are executed in the background, parallel with the main program, macros modifying, creating, Dynamic motor to axis alignment, or dynamical, excuse me, motor to axis alignment. This option allows to attach or detach motors to axis using macro commands. This feature may be useful for CNC machines with two or more heads. For example, it is possible to modify M6 tool change macro to move previous tool to parking position. Change active motors connected to another tool support for Z and X axis. Additional feature macros modifying and creating is required. Again, a lot of you guys have never seen stuff like this. Multiple GUI connections. This option enables connection of more than one GUI client software to the server instant via TCP IP network. Without the option, you may run only one client software. Now, this is probably the most powerful option in the software period. That means that you can actually run multiple robots from one operation client of this software. That's amazing. So basically, you can run your entire shop using, uh, once again, a server-based application of this software. Very, very powerful stuff. Modbus protocol, which we've seen before. Analog input supports option allows, or option allows to enable analog ADC input support if available in the hardware. Now, that's just right here. That's general features. Okay. Now we're coming to plasma cutting. Look at this. Automatic zone down draft air tool table or draft air table control feature allows to use the automatic zone down draft air table control of plasma cutting machine. A table can consist of an arbitrary number of rectangular zones with custom sizes. Tracking torch position is carried out by machine coordinates. The valves of the zones and the asperger are controlled through special output signals. I mean, it's pretty crazy. You can vent your table. I mean. Uh, let's see your plasma cutting server mode. This feature allows to control the plasma cutting mode. Option is minimum or option is the minimum necessary for starting a plasma cutting machine. Cutting parameters library. When this option is activated, 
an empty library of thermal cutting parameters becomes available for use. The library allows you to create, edit, save, and restore with one large set of parameters for cutting various types of materials. Smart burn feature. Smart burn feature allows to reduce the wear on consumables by reducing contamination, shield combustion products during piercing process of the workpiece. Perfect hole feature. The option provides a much higher quality of hole cutting due to the use of additional parameters. When using the perfect hole option, the cut quality becomes comparable to the use of a laser cutting. That for you guys is super powerful. A lot of guys know exactly what I'm talking about working with plasmas. Um, again, really cool feature and something to think about um, when you're trying to get that perfect hole quality that many of you are looking for and some of you can achieve and some can't. Certain systems do have bugs that way. So Z-Height controller locks feature includes a complete set of THC regulation locks for the plasma cutting module. Namely, over voltage lock, slow down lock, and macro locking from the code. Probe radius. If the next pierce is uh, next pierce point is performed at a distance less than the specified radius from the last probe point, then it is considered that the current Z coordinate is correct. A second search is not required. The pierce will be made without a probing, which saves time spent on processing a workpiece with a large number of pierces. Again, very powerful if you want to save time working in conjunction with uh, you know dealing with. Uh, constant work that's always the same and that's something that they try to really look at is how much time can be saved when we're dealing with you know repetitious work which manufacturing is most of the time you're doing a batch run the last thing you want to do is waste time um, reprobing things that aren't required something we always have to do before uh, biphasic probing uh, excuse me, biphasic probing. The feature allows to speed up the standard probing procedure by specifying the safe distance to which the tool will be brought at an increased speed, which a large number of start points. This option allows significantly save time spent moving the cutter to point to the point of contact with the workpiece. Again, cutting simulator. This feature allows to simulate the cutting process without sending commands to activate the plasma torch. The function has a number of parameters such as simulation speed, height, and others. Additionally, the feature allows you to mark up a thick sheet of drilling holes for piercing, stop signal analog over each piercing point. So again, you can test everything before doing it. Very, very powerful stuff. Smart stop and force stop. When you start the program after a force stop inside G code frame, the system will not perform the standard countdown of the pierce delay after the arc OK signal is enabled, but will immediately start moving along the contour. The feature allows to prevent edge defects at the starting point without any lead-in. Again, trying to rectify getting as much of, uh, as close to a laser cutting application as possible with plasma. This feature allows, once again, ignore Z, F instructions from G-code. This feature allows to disable for the plasma or oxy fuel cutting mode for the interpretation of commands for moving along the Z-axis and specifying the work feed F from the text of the control program. Thus, all movements along the Z-axis and feed F are fully controlled by parameters available in the program interface. Again, real powerful stuff. Tube cutting, which many of you out there have requested. This feature is designed for figure processing, cutting pipes for the manufacture of piles, T's, sidebars, etc. When this feature is active, simultaneous movements of linear and rotary axis are maximally smoothed out. Again, very, very powerful stuff for my plasma guys. Now, Oxy fuel cutting. This feature allows to control the oxy fuel cutting program. This module includes advanced algorithms for automatic control of gas supply valves. System controls sequence of turning on and off the gases, minimizing uh, possible operator errors. And we also have milling. Uh, drilling cycle support. Option allows the use of supporting drilling cycle cycles. The option is required to use G73, G81, G82, G83, G85, G89 commands. Tool change feature. This module, I can't tell you, is requested so many times. Um, automatic tool change on CNC machines is performed by uh, special mechanisms with a high response speed for maximum process optimization. Without operator intervention, the option improves productivity, helps reduce downtime, and the time it takes to change a tool. The tool change algorithm can be changed by editing the M6 macro as you need. Very powerful stuff to actually have a fully autonomous system for production. This would bring your, your machine basically up to full-scale operation if required. Uh, well worth it. Once again, this is a module you can purchase. There's no more hunting, no more trying to figure it out. Everything you see here are modules that can be purchased based on your specific need for how you need to expand the software. Automatic signal speed overriding. When the feature is turned on, 
Uh, signal idle speed override coefficient will be automatically adjusted when a feed rate override coefficient is changed to keep cutting speed constant. This feature is only compatible with milling machines and does not support threading. Very powerful if you're milling. Um, uh, there's a couple VFDs out there. I know HY's got a couple that are doing like, uh, it's more like a vector type format where they actually pick up that their RPM may slow down significantly due to how what your feed rate is and then it just amplifies itself and will correct it by once again increasing speed. This is a similar feature. Rotary index machining, that's really common. Five index or five axis index machining. The option enables use of any rotation of any rotational axis, but simultaneous movement of linear X, Y, and Z and rotational A, B, and C axis in one G code block is disabled. The next module unlocks everything. This feature enables true five axis machining with multi axis continuous machining. The rotary axis work continuously together with the linear axis. Strategies for continuous multi axis machining of parts make it possible to process parts with the side surface of the mill, the end surface of the mill, and any given angle of the mill to the surface to be machined. Uh, again, that is essentially full scale machining. Uh, let's see, special features. Again, feature allows use of pre pre uh, pre release version, which I'm working with right now. Service mode feature is intended exclusively for internal use. So again, guys, this pretty much covers what this software can do. Which just looking at it right now, I'm seeing how smooth it is. You can see here, unlicensed. You can select what you want displayed. If I check these, available by default, license applied. See if I uncheck it, just basically controlling that. Going through here once again. If we go in diagnostics, you can see you can expand this for your motors, and you see all three axes. One thing I really love about the diagnostics is they actually show live the step and direction pins, which if I had motors hooked up right now, you would actually see, uh, if I'm actually um, creating motion, you'd see the step and direction pins, LEDs light up. Um, you do have a home pin, limit low, limit middle. Limit high, I know that's a question a lot of you will have. You can basically have a switch anywhere you'd want on your axis, whether it be at the low end, the high end, or in the middle portion of the axis. Right here is your current coordinates, work coordinates. Again, very simple in comparison to if you've already worked with Mach 3, very, very basic. The screen set and the workflow, very, very simple. Um, if I was to close a file right now, let's say close this, go open. Just going to go with a Ferrari logo. We're in. You can see. Whatever you want to do, it's basically set to go. Uh, super, super powerful software. Um, if we go into configuration and we want to add tool table, this is for my guys with the ATC module tool change position from the tool table. Join for all tools. Once again, if you have a question, just leave the mouse. Basically, it's going to explain it to you. Tool numbers, add a new tool. Um, if you add a new tool, you can see whatever tool it is. You can select what pocket, um, the tool number, excuse me, the pocket. What is the pocket? You have a question. Length, most of this is self explanatory. Remove tool. Okay. Now, again, I do have the ATC module. This is a module that would be purchased, but you can see how smooth that is. I mean, okay. Let's see. Background operations. List of available background operations. Now, right now, um, we don't have anything running, so this is a module that it would be populated if we did. You can manipulate that, stop, run, whatever you choose to do. Plugins, of course. Plugins configuration, CNC pendants, uh, support for CNC pendants, other ex external input devices. You have that option. One thing I love about the help, and this is something that I think is going to really make a lot of you. Um, really big fans. If you hit technical support request, she will actually come over here. Please provide some technical inf in, or excuse me, please provide some technical information about your system. We need the information in order to determine possible source source and details of the problem. No sensitive personal data will be collected. Basically what this does is prepare a data log of your exact system and all of your settings so the engineers can analyze exactly all of your settings. No longer will you be forced to go back and forth and email. What's going on? What's the system doing? This does it all for you. It creates the log. You can see here it says prepare data. Once the log is created, it'll send the file then once again to uh, Pumatics in Russia. And the engineers can analyze it and they'll tell you exactly 
what's basically going on with the system or what needs to be corrected to help you get through that issue. That is super, super fast in comparison to, well, what do I do? This is something you see on um, actually more traditional um, work software, not something you've seen on most control software. So again, very, very powerful feature as support is required. Um, coming over here again to configuration, you can see here file. You've got create file, recent file, open file. Once again, most of this stuff is all very basic. Uh, tool table, access control, uh, license manager we went through, uh, background operations, Modbus settings, click on settings. Now this is where things get a little more advanced. Um, controller in use, changes are forbidden. That's because I actually have the on button there. So again, it locks you out of being able to manipulate anything that could potentially cause system harm in terms of the software. So I'm going to turn it off. You see everything went off. Now I'll come over here again, come to settings. Controller simulator, because right now, of course, I'm not logged in with the actual PLCM module. Um, license 2, it's not showing that because the PLCM module is not plugged in. You can see here motors. Now you can see exactly where you want to add motors. You can do your enable pin, home limit low. Uh, you can do software correction of homing switch and units if you had to. Add motor, remove motor. You can come in here and do whatever you need as far as the drop down box. Step pin, direction pin, invert signal. Most of you know what that means. Active high, active low. That's what that symbolizes. Pin one, select all your pinouts. You can see here, pretty crazy. Yeah. Okay, so we'll come over here to Axis. Again, many of you are familiar with this module. Uh, a little more advanced than what you see in Mach 3 as far as the breakdown. Steps frequency. I love that feature. It's showing you your frequency you're running. Uh, max step frequency. Okay. Velocity. Acceleration units. Once again, very, very cool when you're setting up after you've set up your soft limit parameters and you've already tested and calibrated everything. This will show you where you're at as far as system performance. And again, super cool for doing motor tuning. Uh, home coordinate unit. Uh, homing forward velocity, very, very simple. The velocity is applied during move to the homing sensor. So again, speed at which it's moving to the home sensor. Here's something you guys have never seen before. I know I haven't. Um, is the ability for the software with soft limits. In Mach 3, you have to set your soft zone where the software will slow itself down at your correlated uh, spec or excuse me, set actual marker at a distance. So let's say in your soft limits, typically you'd set a slow zone of one inch. That means as soon as the, the software sees that the machine's one inch away from the end stop, it would slow the machine down. Well, guess what? You don't have to do this with this software. It automatically coordinates based on your motor tuning settings, the speed at which it needs to slow down so your soft limits will be active and hit them every time. So again, very powerful stuff. If you factor in all the actual math that has to go in for it to do that, pretty impressive stuff. Um, homing backward, move away distance. That's moving away distance, once again, from the switch. If you leave it here, distance move from the homing sensor prevent its false alarm units. Velocity is applied during movement from home sensor when it's triggered. Motor is roll gang. Once again, I've got all these features because I've got the unlimited version of the software. Once again, if you don't, uh, this would just be... Once again, modules you could add. Upper limits, this is for setting your soft limits. It's very basic. Lower limit unit explains it. Lower limit of tool limit for selected axis. Upper limit, right there. Select your additional features. Okay, now you can come over here and, once again, motor. Add your motors if you're going to do that for each axis. Now, right now, this axis is X because that's what we've got here. You can see I've got all nine. Breaking it down. Axis visibility, you can see it. And again, you've got your velocity, and this is a typical graph we're normally used to seeing. Okay. Input output, another screen that many of you are used to seeing, very, very basic. You've got your input on the left, and on your right, you've got your outputs parameters. And these are all signals that you can program in. Okay. Some of which you, you uh, will not be using, once again, the multi-indexing. But uh, you can see here, you've got an endless array of what you would like to put in. Something else pretty cool, you've got, an e, you've got actually two e-stops if you decided to use them. That's something that I know a lot of guys do. Probing, probing two, probing three. I mean, massive amount of expandability. Massive. You can also add descriptions, which I love, your own personal description. Map pin, very simple. 
Signal should be mapped to a certain controller input signal. Invert, once again, is active high, active low, um, depending upon what you need for your particular system. Come over here, multiplexer. This is really advanced. Once again, we I, I had to ask him on it because I've not seen this yet in, in actual uh, use, and it's something that will be coming at a later date. I'm assuming when more hardware supports it, but it is really cool that the software has it. G code, you can select here rapid move, and again, uh, model motion, depending upon what you're doing, active planes, machine units, inches and millimeters. Very, very simple, very, very basic. Uh, extension filter for your files, arc center mode, and again, your tolerance on the software, exact path, exact stop, constant velocity, work coordinate system. Again, you can see exactly where we're, we're going with this. This is just basic software configuration. Spindle. Now, uh, again, discrete spindle control. You've got analog for PWM if you guys are working with, uh, you know, typical G540 or whatever uh, version you're working with that we're dealing with um, analog type spindle manipulation, which you're typically seeing through Mach 3. And then, of course, external spindle control. Okay, general spindle parameters. You've got your missed cooling signals, flood coolant signal. Uh, spin up delay, spin down delay. I mean, most of this stuff is very, very, very self-explanatory. Okay, discrete, sp uh, discrete spindle control parameters. Now, this is interesting. Pin for clockwise spindle rotational control. Pin for clockwise spindle rotational control. Once again, uh, this is dependent upon which way you're going, counterclockwise, clockwise. So, again, you can invert these pins, whatever you need to do with that, if you were actually... Uh, controlling that through uh, a VFD or a relay output, then you're set. Again, simple spindle control via clockwise, counterclockwise relay. Very, very cool setup. Like this. Even got your spindle encoder, PPR, if you needed it. Oops, sorry about that. Do that again. System. Now here's where we come in and we do uh, forbid multiple client instances. This is basically you configuring um, how you'd like your particular system set up as far as the motion control. Do not check for updates, enable statistics. English is the language I've got set. Inches, uh, dark theme, surface mode. You can see here, pick your colors for your soft limits, all that neat stuff. Uh, function, these are all your keyboard shortcuts. You can click this, add whatever shortcut you'd like. I mean, really, really interesting stuff to make it as smooth and as streamlined as possible. And again, very, very modern as far as what we're, we're coming off of. Um, once again, seeing Mach 3, even Mach 4, I mean, I, I still feel that it's still beta software. There's still some work to be done. And um, looking at something like this, how simple it is, how clean it is, I really appreciate it. I think many of you will. Um, straight line specified. This is your tools. Save Z moves, once again, where your axis, your Z axis will move uh, to make sure that it's not going to hit anything as it moves across the table when it's done machining or prior to machining. Uh, probe sensor type, instead of dealing with uh, Mach 3 and setting up actual, uh, uh, dealing with tool scripts, which many of you are familiar with, this is replacing the tool script. Probe plate height, you just program that in. Probe, uh, probing speed unit in minutes, set plate position, uh, allows uh, to define custom XY coordinates for Z-axis probes. So again, you just define on your table where you want that and probe diameter and tip. That's it. So again, setting your probe up very, very quick. Uh, probe sensor type, one signal, two signal, and you can see here, if you leave it, come back over. Finds type of probing sensor. The probing algorithm depends on the type of sensor, so most of you guys will be using one signal. Um, Miscellaneous. This lets you come in. Again, enable user uh, macro panel. You can see I've already set my uh, couple macros up on the home panel. Jog increments. You've got that. Uh, other system settings. Delay for input start. You can set that. G code caching. Got a lot of cool features here, but I don't feel that it's nearly um, exhausting. A lot of this stuff you're using already, especially if you're familiar with mock. Um, you can see here your jogging keys are right up on front so you've got all that neat stuff turn on the system again and once again you're basically set to go I mean again guys I think this software is worth looking at 
if you want something more advanced, if you're looking at, again, just in sheer safety, I can tell you right now, the fact that soft limits can be active upon the system being turned on is super, super powerful. Super, super powerful in knowing that the system is protected. You also have your toolpath preview. You can see your uh, actual log here as far as what you want to do. You can jog over with the pad. Pretty neat. And considering the fact that with a PLCM controller that Pumatix offers, you get a free unlimited version of G-Code usable motion control software with it. That's probably the best value I've ever seen um, anywhere. I mean, it's very, very powerful what you're able to do. You see here your spindle override and all this stuff. I mean, everything else is pretty general. So, again, guys, I hope the video has been helpful. I'm going to be discussing this in future videos in depth. We'll go through some things. Um, but for my guys using Mach 3 already, you can see this is really quick. I mean, it's a really quick transition to check it out, look at it. Um, the one thing that is going to be discussed is that this software is only able to be used with PLCM Pumatix controllers. I'll say that again. The software can only be used with PLCM Pumatix controllers. Now, is that a big deal? How do I feel about it? I don't feel it's a big deal because of the simple fact that their controllers are so reasonably priced. Um, I will be the only U.S. distributor, so realistically, once you see the pricing, there'll be nothing like this in the market, really as far as what's able to be done with this for what it costs. And the beauty, again, in the sense that you're able to buy a module if required and not buy one if not, maybe you just need the basic level of software and you're fine with it. Great. As soon as you're ready to upgrade, you only pay for what you need, which I feel is super powerful in itself. These are features that, like I said, are just stuff you're not going to see anywhere else. And with what you have here encompassing, knowing that it's 64-bit software, it's server-based, it's got the multi-client option, which you're able to run multiple robots on one instance of the software, that's incredible. I mean, super, super powerful stuff in the right hands. So, and definitely stuff to grow with. So as I do more videos, naturally I'll release them. I know I'm going to have a lot of questions. If you guys have questions, of course, direct them to, uh, to me, please. Uh, directly at storm2313 at gmail.com. Um, there is going to be a lot of support questions because, again, I know I'm dealing with a language barrier, but once again, their engineers have been wonderful. Um, thank God most of them all speak English, so it helps. That's their second language. Um, my Russian is really rough, so I'm trying to uh, keep up to date. I wish I could speak Russian as well as they speak English, and you know, we'll go from there. But keep in mind, my outlook like theirs is that you guys are successful. Whatever I sell, I want to support personally. And that's why this is very powerful stuff. I would not be talking about this unless I was confident that you would be getting software that you're always able to use, whether it's supporting your business, or serious hobbyist, just getting involved, whatever it is. I want you guys to have the most advanced and the best and stuff I would use. And again, I do use this. It's an amazing piece of software. I've used it now for months. And it really works amazing. So, again, you can message me direct, storm2313 at gmail.com. You can also message me in the link description below. You'll see it in the, uh, on the actual text box in the, in the video description. Also, um, you'll see it on the screen. Uh, and you guys will be set.